Hello and welcome back to another Petroglyphs in the Sky UFO show. I am your host, Jeff Woolwine. How is everybody doing today on this very first episode of 2022? Let's hope this year is a lot better than the last two years, right? Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button here on the YouTube channel. The Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky. Make sure it says the Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky uh, because that is uh, our real channel. Okay, so here we talk about the Phoenix Lights and uh, the petroglyphs that match on the mountains around Phoenix that explains on not only the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona, but also uh, what these Phoenix Lights really is. And from hardcore proven facts and uh, from the petroglyphs that match these things that we see in the skies today, all the way down uh, to like the first park ranger uh, of South Mountain who knew about the, the Phoenix Lights and who knew uh, about the gold tombs left by the Holocombs and the Mayans uh, that are on South Mountain and the sacrificing altars and all that crazy stuff. Yes, I am talking about the real stuff that's really here in Phoenix, not hearsay, not what the archaeologist wants you to believe, not what other people with books trying to get money and fame off the Phoenix Lights is. No, this is many, many years, over over 15 to, to now close to like 20 years now of research into the Phoenix Lights. I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, been seeing these, sky, these things in the sky ever since I was a kid. And uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> uh, I've been I've been. Uh, doing this for a very 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 long time and uh so yeah um tonight we got an interesting show uh we're going to talk about the brown mountain lights out there in north carolina uh now my wife is from north carolina and, and i remember her talking to me a little bit about these lights but i really didn't look into it um until just recently when my friend on facebook kyler uh introduced me back to them and I did a little bit of research on them. And, uh, you know, when I was watching them and seeing what they were doing out there, I was like, wait a minute, dude, hold the phone. I have seen the exact same type of lights on South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. Those of you who have been watching my past shows and follow me for all these 20 years or so, uh, you know, I talk about South Mountain on how um, South Mountain is a heart, is a source of the Phoenix Lights, and these lights has been visiting this mountain for you know th over a thousand years at least, probably more, and uh, probably since the beginning of time. And uh, so yeah, you know when I once I saw these lights out there on the North Mountain uh, in North Carolina, I was like, man, that's the exact same thing. So we're gonna talk about that, and we're gonna show some videos on that, and we're gonna show you the videos that I filmed on South Mountain. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna be a great, great show. Okay. Let's get this party started. What are we starting off with? Okay, so I have another another channel. My wife and I, we go out there and we, we investigate hauntings and uh, paranormal. If you guys are into the paranormal stuff, check out my other YouTube channel, Haunted Encounter Adventures. Um, my wife Pam and I, uh, and, and sometimes we join up with other ghost hunters, uh, we go out there investigate ghosts and, and do seances and paranormal and I use my SLS, SLS camera and we have a great time and uh, so yeah make sure you go out there and check out Haunted Encounter Adventures on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to that also thank you so much okay the Phoenix Lights Petroglyphs in the Sky Landscape for the Spirits this is it guys uh, 15 years of research into this um, this is uh, a book that I have written um, in investigating the, pe the, the petroglyphs out there on the mountains, um, watching the skies of Phoenix, documenting everything, uh, much like what the Holocom Indians did. I, uh, I researched who the Holocom people were. Um, I actually had a Native American shaman take me up on South Mountain and explain the true ways, the true ways of what these petroglyphs actually represent and stand for. And, uh, you know, in my many, many years, I have proven, not just a theory now, I have proven that these petroglyphs out here around the mountains of the Valley of the Sun are prehistoric UFO sightings. That's, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. These are prehistoric photographs of what these Native Americans saw back in their day. And they talk about the Phoenix Lights. They talk about what the, what the real history of Phoenix is. 
and uh, it goes all the way back into the Mayans. Uh, I, you know, and some believe some some would even believe that the Holocaust people were part of the Mayan race, and that would kind of make sense to me. Um, but I have seen different uh, petroglyph carvings out there. Um, a lot of Mayan uh, petroglyphs and a lot of Holocaust petroglyphs, and uh, some would even some would even say uh, that some of these carvings kind of represent the Anunnaki. So yeah, this stuff goes way way back. Uh, into history and you know the archaeologists here in Phoenix they don't want to talk about this stuff they are burying this stuff and uh, so when I was out there in the field uh, exploring the mountain hiking the mountains for you know 15 years I've been all over that mountain taking photographs of the petroglyphs finding tombs yes I found so many tombs out there on South Mountain uh, it just it just made me crazy I was like what the heck is going on here Look at this stuff. Look at this proven evidence we have on this mountain of, of Arizona's or Phoenix history. And they don't want to dig it up. They don't want to, they don't want anything to do with this. They actually made South Mountain a government park. So you cannot go up there and start digging up these tombs and finding out what's there. Because if you do, you'll go to prison. And that's a bunch of baloney. Baloney? Baloney? Malarney? <laughs> it's a bunch of BS. How about that? Yeah, man. I mean, I think I think we should go out there and at least open up one tomb. At least find out what's in one tomb. Um, and that's what uh, the first park ranger, Charles Holbrook, from the 1930s was doing. He was out there protecting the tombs and making sure nobody was digging them up. But if we get a hold of the archaeologist, if we pressure this archaeologist, and if we go down to ASU and we, you know, talk to the ASU students out there, uh, the people who are into archaeology and things, and, and, and point out, look, let's open up at least one tomb. Um, you can find some of these tombs on my website. Um, all my YouTube channels, uh, there's links in the descriptions on every video on how to get to my website. And there you can find the, the true history of Phoenix, Arizona, uh, written by Charles Holbrook, the first park ranger in the 1930s, um, uh, who learned all this stuff from the Native Americans in his day. And they taught him. They taught him who the, ho who the Holocom people were. Uh, what these things in the skies really is, and the tombs that are out there on South Mountain. Um, so yeah, you know, this is this is true stuff. This is credible evidence, right? It's not hearsay. It's not you know my theory. No, this evidence has always been here. This proven stuff has always been here in our backyard. It's just been buried and covered up for eighty years. Now I did I did the pilot for the UFO Hunter show in two thousand five. Uh, I wrote an article for UFO Magazine. Um, I, I did, I, and then finally, um, I ended up doing the UFO Hunter Show uh, uh, in 2007 on the History Channel. And I've done Jaime Masson. I, I've met that guy a few times and been on his programs a lot. Um, and True TV. So, you know, my information is out there. You search my name, Jeff Woolwine, on the Internet, you're going to come up with all this stuff that I've been doing for all these years on the, on the South Mountain, on the Phoenix Lights. Um, I'm probably the only one who's ever done the most research on the Phoenix Lights. Hands-on stuff, man. Not just hearsay, you know, from people uh, that, you know, just can't prove anything. But this is uh, hardcore evidence facts on what the Phoenix Lights is, who saw them, who, who recorded them first. And it, it all comes down to the Holocom Indians, all comes down to Phoenix, Arizona's true history past. Now, when Charles Holbrook was uh, um, out there, you know, doing his business on, on South Mountain, <laughs> that didn't sound very good, anyway. <laughs> but he was out there, you know, doing uh, his thing on South Mountain or whatever, protecting the tombs. You know, he did tours on South Mountain, much like uh, I used to do. And uh, talking about the petroglyphs, understanding the petroglyphs, he actually uh, um, handed out a, a brochure. And you can see that brochure on my website. And it talks about the lost city, Cibola. Now, why would he call Phoenix, Arizona, Cibola? Now, we all know what Cibola is, right? The city of gold. Uh, the, f um, uh, the Spanish conquistadors were looking for the seven cities of gold, right? And actually, Phoenix, Arizona was one of their stops. Now, the archaeologists don't want to admit this. Uh, but there's so much evidence that the Spanish conquistadors were here, that the Mayans were here, that the tombs are here, and also there are sacrificing altars. 
everything that we see out there in Mexico, uh, as far as um, the Aztec pyramids and all that stuff, it's the same kind of story here in Phoenix, Arizona. And this kind of makes sense, too, because, you know, back in the day, Arizona was a part of Mexico. Uh, so it's only logical that the Mayans would migrate into this uh, area, um, especially after seeing these lights. And and I think um, that's that's probably how they ended up here uh, is because they followed the lights to this mountain, to uh, South Mountain. And they, they used to call it Mount Sapoa, Mountain of Mercy. And, uh, you know, much like what I did, I followed these lights in 2004. They, these lights showed me to, showed me towards the mountain these these lights appeared in the sky uh, on the east side i was living out there in mesa arizona in 2004 i was hunting these lights these lights appeared in the sky and, and they're going towards south mountain well i followed the lights i followed the lights to the mountain and i believe this is how the whole come indians and this is how the the mayan indians uh came to this part of the land to this valley uh, is because they follow these lights to the mountain. Now, South Mountain is a sacred mountain, and it has been uh, for centuries, for thousands of years, uh, because of the activity that it attracts. Um, as far as these lights, lights in the sky, orbs, uh, the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, um, the flying diamonds, the flying worms, all this crazy stuff that we see on the petroglyphs out there, is the stuff that we see in the skies today there is a there is no shadow of a doubt here this is proven fact um i discovered this in 2005 watching these things come and go from the mountains and when i went out there to investigate what did i find you know i'm looking for a crop circle right you know i'm looking for some kind of evidence uh that a spaceship right landed out there because i saw it i videotaped it now i'm here where it was where it supposedly landed at and what do i find i find a huge boulder with spirals on it right and the ex and a stick figure guy stick figure carving of a man looking up at the exact same thing that i filmed in the sky the day before that is crazy dude that is proof positive right there that these petroglyphs here are exact are, are talking about the phoenix lights the prehistoric photographs of ufo sightings they didn't have video cameras back then they didn't have photography back then they had stone boulders to record their sightings on in the places where the event took place at so when you see these petroglyphs in a certain area that is a testimony that is uh um uh, a photographic history of the event that took place right there in that area this is why we find petroglyphs on one side of the mountain and no petroglyphs on the other side of the mountain is because over there nothing happened over here everything <laughs> happened right because that's where the photographs are uh, and that's what and it's telling us you know look this is what we saw in the sky you know my other shows i talk about how the petroglyphs are high up on cliffs and when you look at the petroglyphs, you have to uh, look at the whole landscape because that's what the artist is putting in with the art is the landscape. And so when he puts uh, a, 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 a carving high up on a, on a cliff, on a rock, and you have to look up because that is what he's telling you. He's saying, look, I looked up and I saw this thing in the sky and I saw it right here. Now, I don't have a photograph. I don't have a video of what you guys have today, but I have that rock right and it's high and i saw it right there next to that rock so i'm gonna climb that rock right i'm gonna climb that steep hill and i'm gonna put that carving right there because i want you and me and everybody else to understand what i saw in the sky and, and it was there so we have to look up to see that carving so after a while, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, like, I, you know, I'm thinking spaceships, technology, crafts. But over the years, watching these things, and they knew I was watching them. It was weird. They knew I was there. I mean, like I said before, I followed them. They appeared in the sky. They went towards South Mountain. I followed them to the mountain. You know, I went to South Mountain. And then you know, not only did I see the lights, the Phoenix lights, so many you know nights in a row in 2004 but i also started seeing day stuff uh that was coming and going from south mountain and i'd go out there and i'd see these spirals right and and um dave morris from the pueblo indian art museum in uh downtown phoenix uh was actually the one that taught me about all these petroglyphs here he's a native american and and uh, he works at an at an indian museum there 
And, uh, you know, I, a little bit of background. I, I saw him on Channel 8 talking about the petroglyphs. And uh, somebody was uh, with him and says, that stick figure man looks like he's looking up at something in the sky. And Dave said, absolutely. He says, that's part of the interpretations is that our ancestors saw and recorded things in the sky. And that's what some of these rock art interpretations are. And, you know, I, I was watching this in 2004, the beginning of 2004. And, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know, uh, the 1997 March 13th lights happened in 97. And now it's 2004, and no one's talking about these petroglyphs out here? You know, come on now. We have strange lights in the skies. Now we have strange carvings on the mountains out here. I was convinced there's there's got to be a connection here. And for what better way to find out is to contact this guy on sound I saw on television, uh, trace him down, and have him go up there and teach me these petroglyphs. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, sure enough, you know, I, I was on to something. Uh, you know, he was telling me about the spirals and how they represent doorways. And he's telling me uh, that these cracks in the stones are the emergence point to the underworld uh, for the spirits. And uh, um, he's telling me on how the first Holocom people arrived here, that these spirits came out from the sky, up from the sand world, and they taught these people how to live. And uh, all this crazy stuff. And especially when he was talking about the spirals, right, and the cracks in the stone. And he's telling me, well, now that's the emergence point. Uh, that's the entrance uh, to the underworld. At that time, am I still mainframe? Uh, I'm still thinking, you know, that these are, you know, spaceships and crafts and technology. And I'm like, dude, how can a, how can a huge spaceship get into a little crack like that in a boulder? Until, you know, a few days later, right, I'm actually watching these things coming and going from the mountain and, and it explained on why earlier I saw this thing land on the mountain and I go out there and I see these petroglyphs and, and a stick figure guy looking up at an orb I just filmed, you know, the, the day before, but no evidence, but no evidence of this. Yeah, so I'm out there and I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, that explains on the exact same thing I saw in the sky and there was no trace of it. There was no trace of it, you know, no evidence of a crop circle, uh, nothing like that. And uh, um, so I'm like, well, you know, where did it go, right? But I saw the spiral in a crack, and it had to gone into that crack, right? Because when I, when I videotaped it, when I saw it, it was like it came down out of the sky, and it was solid, right? It was solid. And then it came down, and then it kind of was like a ghost, right? And then it just absorbed itself, absorbed itself into the rock. And I'm like, wait a minute, that is crazy, dude, right? I just filmed this thing. It came out of the sky, and it went into the mountain. It went into an emergence point. It went down into the underworld, just like what these legends are talking about. I saw it. I witnessed it. I videotaped it. I recorded it. And I go out there, and I see a spiral doorway, and I see the exact same uh, thing uh, in the sky that I filmed the day before, a sick figure man looking up at it. I mean, come on now. What? <laughs> that, 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 this is not hearsay. This is not, you know, just my story, dude. This is proven fact, dude. This is, uh, this is hardcore research out there doing the Phoenix Lights, trying to figure out what the hell is going on in my city. And I tell you what, man, you go look, you're going to find it. You seek and you shall find. And I tell you what, I found it, man. And this is why I'm bringing this evidence to you. And once I started learning that what we're dealing with, because they were coming at me. I mean, as those of you who have been watching my videos all these years, you see them leaving South Mountain. They're coming over right over my window. I had an apartment window, second story on the east side of South Mountain. And I'm seeing these things coming and going. And I'm filming them. And the more and more I'm witnessing them, more and more I see them, the more and more that they're coming around, I soon realize that this was not crafts that we're dealing with here. These are not spaceships at all. These things were alive. They were highly intelligent. They knew who was watching, who wasn't watching, and they, I, they knew that I was watching them and filming them. They wanted me to film them. That's the only expl explanation I can come up with on how I got so many good sightings over the years. You know, <laughs> these things are alive. And then, and then, and then, once I learned 
right? That the petroglyphs has the power to invoke these things, right? I went out and tested it once. I went to a petroglyph and I was like, I, this at a canyon where all these spirals were representing that whole canyon down the side of the mountain was the doorway, was the emergence point because that whole canyon had all these spirals in it, right? So I'm kicking there. Uh, I'm taking a break and I'm like, you know, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Why don't you come to see me? Well, the next morning, right? I'm looking out my window and what do I see? I see a flying serpent, a flying snake come right out of that canyon. Oh, oh, by the way, on top of that canyon is two petroglyph guys. One, one, one looks like a, um, a guy wearing a headdress, right? And then another regular guy, and he's looking up at a flying snake. He's looking up at a flying serpent at the top of that crack, on the top of that canyon down South Mountain with all these spirals in it, right? And here sits, well, I, one morning I look out there, and I see I filmed this serpent come out of that canyon Go up into the sky about a thousand feet and then come over right over my apartment. I videotaped this whole thing. And I was just out there the day before talking to these petroglyphs. So, yeah, they got pretty crazy out there, man. I was talking to these petroglyphs. I was talking to these spirits out there. And they were actually, um, you know, coming and seeing me, right? It worked. And that was a secret that I uncovered. And it's not just myth or legend, this is real stuff. And I soon realized that these were alive. These creatures were alive. They, they were shape-shifting, right? They were changing colors. And they were morphing. And that's what some of these petroglyphs out here, the archaeologists call some of these uh, abstract um, um, depictions of, like, weird animals and stuff. Um, they call them anthropomorphs. They're shape-shifting, right? So the archaeologist, he'll go, he'll go to that line in telling people, you know, but he won't cross it. He won't tell people, yeah, that that uh, anthropomorph, that's a shape-shifting UFO. He won't go that far. He'll go as far as he can, right? But he'll keep that information to himself. He's not going to tell you that. He's not going to tell you that these are prehistoric photographs of UFO sightings. He's not going to tell you that. He's not going to tell you about the gold tombs out there that you know, the first park ranger Charles Holbrook was protecting left by the mines and the Holcom. He's not going to tell you all that stuff. I didn't even know that stuff until I went out there and found him. You know, I, I love archaeology. I've been, an, I've been an amateur archaeologist, you know, a couple years before I was a ufologist. So I can spot something a man made a mile away. And when I found these tombs, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> wow, there's actually something buried there, right? And then, you know, just on a hunch, because that's what um, true investigators do. They go out there and they investigate everything. They just don't take the word from one person with no evidence. You have to dig deep. You have to find the facts, you know. Hearsay is good, but we need proven facts here. We have to have something back us up. And that's what was going on with me for like a year. I'm finding these tombs and I'm finding these these sacrificing altars and I'm finding the, the stories um, that reflect back to like the Mayans and some would even say uh, from the, um, the Anastasi or um, the Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki. I'm finding all these carvings and all these stories out there because once you understand the petroglyphs and understand the landscape and what the artist is telling, man, you can understand these stories. The rocks are talking to me, man. That's exactly what was going on. And so I, I'm understanding all these stories out here. And then I go read the archaeologist's book because that's what you do. You cross your T's and you dot your I's, right? You investigate. That's what I was doing. So you got to find out what the archaeologist is talking about this. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> Whew, right? You know, I, I was I, I did um, a news report with the city of Phoenix archaeologist, archaeologist and, uh, you know, <laughs> I 
that didn't go over, over over too well. And and I don't think I've ever seen another news report of a city archaeology archaeologist actually coming out on TV with a ufologist and trying to disclaim everything that's out there that's out there and proven. Um, and, and and dismiss it on not UFO sightings, on not being visited by, you know, these creatures um, and all this stuff, you know, and actually come up on television and, and you know, basically, I mean, because when you look at the facts, dude, when you go out there and you look at all this evidence, you know, the archaeologist is just, you know, he's keeping all this a secret. And that's what was going on with Charles Holbrook, right? Because he told people about the tombs, but then people were out there trying to dig him up, and that's one of the reasons why they kind of buried this. After Holberg died uh, in um, in the late forties, um, they buried all his information, and they don't want nobody to know about the gold tombs out there because they don't want nobody going out there and digging them up, you know, and finding out the true history of Phoenix. Right? They don't want you doing that because you might fool, you might come out, you know, with you know maybe a crystal skull or maybe some kind of thing that won't. Um, agree uh, with what we are led to believe on what Phoenix really is and and our and what the human race history really is you know they they're trying to bury all this stuff they're covering it up so uh, you know he passed away they buried his story um, in a folder in the library for 80 years um, and they made South Mountain a government park so you can't go up there and explore you can't go up there and disturb anything can't go up there and start digging you know, they want you to stay on the trails, right? They don't want you to go off the trails because when you do, that's when you learn stuff. You know, you, that's when you find the real evidence of what's really going on here. And that's what I was doing, right? And um, so I'm finding all this stuff for like a whole year, right? I'm finding the I'm finding the altars. I'm finding the tombs. I'm understanding the glyphs, you know. Um, there's depictions of giants out there. And I, I'm finding evidence of giants on South Mountain. Yes, folks, I found evidence of giants. Somebody huge, somebody big, big and powerful was out here, man, picking up these huge, big blocks, right, and stacking them with walls and all kinds of stuff. And, and, and oh, it's just, look at my past shows, you know, look at my book, right? And uh, <laughs> so I'm finding all this evidence. I'm taking photographs. I'm taking videos. You know, I'm watching the spirits come and go from the mountain. I'm learning that these things are not spaceships, but they are living creatures, living beings, living entities, if you will. And um, so, like about a year later, you know, now it's time to go uh, investigate. Um, you know, see what I can find in, in 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 the Phoenix Library. So I go to Burton Bar Library in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I go up to the Arizona room, and I asked her, I asked the secretary, you know, give me everything you have on the South Mountain. She comes out with a folder about this thick, right? I open it up, and lo and behold, what is it? What is it? It's, it's talking about Charles Holbrook, you know, the lost city of Cibola. It talks about the tombs, the altars, the Mayans, where these people went, all this stuff you can see on my website. And so everything I was finding that year before was correct. It all it all backed it up. It backed up everything that I discovered out there. It was credible. It was credible evidence. And it was buried from the public for 80 years. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm bringing this information to you. And that's what this book is all about. The Phoenix Lights, Landscape for the Spirits, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs over Phoenix. Tons of photographs, color photographs on, on how to understand the petroglyphs. I think it even goes in in there to understanding the seasons on uh, when these uh, these uh, UFOs, if you will, if these UAPs, uh, these entities visit the Valley of the Sun, because it's a pattern. It's it's a seasonal pattern, and that's a secret too that you know I accidentally discovered over the many 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 years of watching that mountain, constantly watching that mountain and documenting. All the times I saw something come from come down to that mountain or go up to that mountain, I documented it. I soon realized that they were here on certain certain months. They were gone on certain certain months. They came back on certain certain months. And then I learned about the light and shadows that's out there uh, left by the Holocom Indians. That's tracking the sun, tracking the seasons. 
and the archaeologist wants you to believe, well, it, it's just telling them uh, that it's time to plant corn. It has nothing to do with planting corn. It's when these beans will return and when they will leave. It's a cycle. It's a cycle that's been going on for thousands of years now. This is how you can come to this mountain. Once you understand the glyphs, once you understand the light and shadow, once you understand the sun, and another key that is the main thing to all of this is what lies under South Mountain. Under South Mountain is a huge fault line that created this mountain, this Mount Sapoa, this South Mountain. It, cre it was created by a fault line. So these creatures, these entities, are attracted to that energy spot right there. To that it's the key. It's the heart. It's the source. It's an intergalactic gas station. Boy, I tell you what, these things are there. They're going down into that fault line, or sometimes they'll just hover over that mountain, and, and, and they, they absorb so much energy, they start to glow red and orange and white, right? That's when we start seeing the Phoenix lights, right? All these orange, amber orbs out there, right? You know, you see five lights out there. People are thinking it's a huge spaceship. But in fact, what they're looking at is five living entities, five living beings, and they're here over that mountain to absorb the energy. It has everything to do with the energy sources. The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs of the Sky, Landscape for the Spirit. Check it out. eBay, Barnes & Noble, eBooks. All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, whoo, are you ready? <laughs> I can go on, man, because I just love talking about this. You know, and those of you who have been watching me all these years, yeah, I babble. I go on, you know, but I have so much information, you know, so much proven facts, not hearsay, but actual, you know, someone who's actually gone out on the mountain and, and investigated all this stuff for 15 years, man, and watching the skies of Phoenix and recording this and, Digging up the history, you know, there's just so much information. I, I do radio shows and TV shows like all the time, you know, and I and they're just overwhelmed with what I'm talking about because they're just it, sometimes it goes over their head. And then sometimes I just completely blow them away, you know, because they're like, dude, <laughs> all that stuff's there, man. I mean, what's going on? Right. No one's known about this for 80 years. OK, so. I'm out there. Let's 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 talk about these uh, brown mountain lights out here in, in West Virginia that are connected to these uh, lights out here in the South Mountain. All right. So let's talk about a little bit on the history of this mountain. So the brown mountain lights are a series of ghost lights reported for many, many years near the brown mountain, North Carolina area. The lights have been seen at several locations about 60 to 70 miles northeast of Asheville in Burke County. Brown Mountain is located at the Pisgah National Forest. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> According now, this gets inter this this is interesting. This comes into my league. Now we're talking about the Native Americans who are talking about this, right? According to the Cherokee legend, right? Around 1200 A.D., a great battle was fought between the Cherokee and the Catobala Indians at Brown Mountain. And the, and the mysterious lights are from, this is what they say they are. This is what they think they are. And they say that these mysterious lights are from the Indian maidens still searching for their men who died in battle. Many people have tried to explain the origin of these, of these lights for many years. We're going to talk about this subject tonight, and we're going to get down to the bottom of this, and we're going to talk about some stuff on these lights that you know could make some credible sense here. Once we go over this, once we start exploring, you know, and understanding a little bit more on what these lights are, then we're going to. I believe at the end of the show, uh, you're going to say, "Wow, you know, that's probably what these lights are." Okay. Let's get into it. All right, so now that we know a little bit of history on the Brown Mountain Lights, let's talk about, you know, South Mountain for a minute. So like I've already talked about, 
you know, how, how this mountain is sacred and it's got the fault line and it's got the energy source and these lights uh, are attracted to this uh, mountain here. And uh, so in 2004, right, I'm up on this huge stadium in Mesa Community College. I'm up on a bleachers, okay, and I'm watching these lights. I'm watching the Phoenix lights on the east side of South Mountain, uh, over a power plant. This power plant is setting on Ray Road. Those of you who are in Phoenix, Arizona, or those of you who want to check this out on, on Google Earth, you want to go to Ray Road about a couple miles east of South Mountain, uh, you'll see this very huge power plant that sits there. In my investigations and my studies, I found this old map uh, where the pilgrims who first settled here in Arizona uh, documented all the Holcombs uh, canals and documented where the Holcombs used to live at, all their, uh, uh, all their abandoned uh, adobe structures and stuff like that. And it just so happens uh, that where this power plant sits today on the east side of South Mountain was the heart, was the city. Uh, for the Holcomb Indians. There, that was a major, that was the city. That's where everybody came to uh, live at, was right there at that energy source. And I believe because these lights are coming right over that energy, that energy source. And this power plant is just, you know, happened to be there now, bore down into that fault line, generating this energy for us to turn on these lights in our, in our homes, right? And so... Before then, I mean, it was like, and, and not even before, it still is. You know, these lights are going right over that area. And the Holcomb Indians knew that. They lived there. They, they watched these beings come right over their head, right there to absorb this energy on the east side of South Mountain. So, I'm up there, right? This is, um, I can't remember. We'll have to look at the date here when, when I pull it up. Let's let's pull this up here. Okay. So, I'm up there on, on the uh, on the on the bleachers of Mesa Community College, and I'm setting up my tripod, got my camera ready, and I'm waiting, because, like that whole summer of 2004, I got so many UFO lights out there, it was crazy. So many Phoenix lights. I mean, it was unreal. Uh, you know, I ended up calling the news. I was like, dude, is there anybody seeing this? You know, <laughs> I did five news reports and the end result, you know, everybody knows that we're all seeing flares. And that was just total BS, man. You know, not flares 150 miles away in Tucson. These lights were here at the mountain, right? You know, they're in the city. They're huge. They're amber. They're big orange amber lights. There's no airplanes dropping these things out. There's no smoke. They stay in formations of pyramids and lightning bolts and huge lines. I mean, it was crazy. I think I'm probably the only one that's got so many UFO sightings of these Phoenix lights. I've got tons, tons of video of these lights. So as I'm out there watching that area, every once in a while I would look over there and glance at South Mountain. And lo and behold, I started seeing something strange on the mountain. So I grabbed my camera. And I started filming, and I saw these lights on the mountain. Now, I've been in that area, and I know that there's no trail there, okay? I know that cars are not allowed on the mountain. So once I started seeing this, it really, you know, it caught my attention because I was just there a couple days ago, and I know that there's no path up there. I know that's a rocky area, but yet I'm seeing these lights, right? And they were just appearing and then disappearing, right? Let's sit here and watch this, watch this stuff for a while. This is in August of 2004. And these lights are just, you know, just like, you know, what they want to say, they're like ghost lights, right? This is on South Mountain. Now, if these, if these were bicycles or anything like that, you know, we would see the light beam, right? But yet we don't see any light beams. And we don't see, like, anything around there. They're, they're just, look at that. Look how they're just coming in, okay? They're, they're magically just coming in. 
in and out of the mountain. That's the only thing I can. Uh, that's the only thing I can explain. Look, and they're disappearing, right? Watch this very carefully. Examine this. Watch what they're doing here. And I was just amazed on, on what I was looking at. You know, I was like, because I would, like I said, I was just out there a few days ago on that side. And it's pretty steep out there, and there's no roads, there's no trail. And and but I got these I got these like colored lights out there going on with no explanation for this, right? I don't think anybody has ever got this on film before. I've never seen this here in, in Phoenix or South Mountain or anywhere else except for Brown Mountain. And we're gonna show you the video on that. Uh, the videos that I was able to find anyway. Um, we're going to show you that. But I wanted, wanted, wanted you to watch these lights first before we get into the brown mountain lights. And I want you to, to examine this and get a feel on on what I'm talking about here, you know, on, on, on the brown mountain lights, now, you know, south mountain lights, you know. I don't think anybody else has ever seen this before. Or if they do... Uh, they're just, you know, blowing it off. They're thinking it's a car or, or if it, it's a bicycle up there. And and right now where I'm at, I'm I'm at least what? Oh my God, how I don't know how far that is. I mean, I'm pretty far from the mountain right now, and you can see the skyline of the mountain there. Uh, but I'm a great distance from South Mountain right now. Um, I want to say about five miles, maybe more. I don't know. Uh, but if these were, you know, like bicycle lights, right, I don't think I'd see it that big, you know. And and another reason, there is no bicycle path up there. It's all rocky right there in this area. And uh, so they, there is no explanation for this. These are not cars. Look at this. These lights are just hanging there, right? And I want you to watch this. Look at that. See that? And look how it doubles up. Do you see that? See how it became one, became two? And then look, look, there are more. There's, they're just, look at that. Is that crazy or what? Phantom ghost lights, right? And here's my favorite part is when they, they kind of go in a circle. Watch this. See that, how they kind of go in a circle right there? Now that's crazy. That right there, that's not a car. That's not a bicycle. That's not somebody up there on a flashlight, right? Look how they're moving. And I kept filming them. I kept watching them because I've never seen them out there before. You know, up until now, I guess maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Look how they just disappeared. Where'd they go? Oh, they're over there now. See, now look, they moved over here. See that? They're over there now. And yes, this building here, you know, uh, this building here, it's, it's in my way. And South Mountain is back over here. And this right here is actually a parking garage. I forget what, what it's from. But uh, yeah, so, and this is the mountain. This is South Mountain up, up in here. And you can see, look at the lights here. I only wish that this darn building wasn't in my way because they're going down. You see that? Look, 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 look. Look how they just appeared over there now, right? See that? I don't think, I, I don't think I've ever seen any of this type of sighting if you will uh, you know anywhere else except for the brown mountain lights and i really don't think anybody is out there uh, paying attention to south mountain look at that i don't think anybody's paying attention to that mountain this is how these things are getting away with being in our skies and on our mountains for so many years is because nobody knows this this is a secret i'm exposing this secret i'm exposing the true history of phoenix I'm exposing all this. I'm bringing the fact evidence to you. 
look at the evidence here. Look, I just filmed this, right? This was in 2004. Now, is that crazy? Okay. So, in 2005, after they're telling everybody that we're seeing flares out there in the mountains, right? And I want to move to the mountain, okay? I want to move to South Mountain. So, because I want to get some day shots, and plus I want to be able to get to the mountain, you know, on a regular basis, you know. So I, I moved to the mountain on the east side of South Mountain in Phoenix, um, about a mile away from the mountain. Second story window, second story apartment, looking out my kitchen window, and I had the perfect view. Let's get this started here. I had the perfect view of that mountain. And one night, one night, I started seeing these lights on the mountain. Now, this is, that's my window there. Because <laughs> I'm seeing these lights. So I grabbed my camera real quick, and I started filming. Look at this. Now, look at this. They're blue. And again, there's no trails out there. See that? Look at that. Look at that. This is night vision. I just switched it over to night vision. Okay. And look how they're just appearing there. And these are not bikes. Look at that. Is that insane or what? Look at that. Look how many there are right there. This is on the mountain. These are not cars. Cars are not allowed on the mountain, except, you know, when you go up to, you know, lookout point, you know, or, or the paved roads up there. And I can tell you this is not a paved road. Those of you who have seen my other sightings know um, you can you can go back and look at my, my previous videos. And you can see the mountain out there and how these lights are just, you know, not supposed to be there, <laughs> right? And look at that. Watch what they're doing. Study what they're doing here. And this is what, I think March, I think. March of 2005. Yeah, at 738. And these, these lights are just appearing on South Mountain. They're actually going in the mountain, right? Phantom lights, I guess. See that? Look, there's night vision. And and look, it look at that. It just absorbed himself into the mountain. Just disappeared into the mountain. I think if more people would would watch South Mountain, they would see this too. But a lot of people probably think, oh, they're just bikes, you know, they're, you know, hikers, but they're not understanding that, you know, the bikes there's no trails up there for the bikes, you know, and there are no car roads up there. And uh, so, oh, I think it'll, I think it'll replay it here in a minute. Yeah, and so these lights down here on the bottom. So that's a uh, that right there. Um, yeah, that's a street light right there. And all these that's like Circle K that used to be there. That's Circle K right there. <laughs> And then the street lights here, and then those lights over there. That's a, um, uh, a radio antenna. And then we have these lights here. And that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. We'll, we'll, we'll watch this one more time, and then we'll talk about the brown mountain lights. Look at that. Look, 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 look. Is that amazing or what? No explanation for that. Now this is night vision. Look how they kind of like. They they morph, right? Like some will come out of another. Like like there'll be a light there, and then like two lights will come out of that light, right? Tell me that's an airplane. Airplane. Tell me that's a a, a car or or a bicycle or a hiker, right? This is unexplainable. This is not normal. What we are looking at. Look at that. Look at that. Look how many of there out there, and they're just appearing, with no explanation of this. Study this. Look at this. Because what I'm about to show you 
is going to blow your mind. Crazy, crazy stuff. So this has been going on, you know, for pff, thousands of years. And, you know, again, why? Why this mountain? It's because of the fault lines. It's because of the energy. These things are here for the energy. So when you, when you, if you're in a town that sees a lot of UFOs, find out the history. Find out the mountains. Right? See if the mountains have spiral petroglyphs. Spirals are the doorways that you want to you wanna look for. You find a mountain with spirals, you have a source. You have a spot on where the sky watch at. You can watch right there. You have these petroglyphs with anthropomorphs, these weird glyphs, half animal, half human, stuff like that. Or these animals with different direction feet. Anthropomorphs, shape-shifting entities, shape-shifting UFOs, UAPs, if you will. Okay. All right. So now that you know what I'm talking about with South Mountain, let's set that aside. Let's talk about the brown mountain lights in North Carolina. Okay. So this is the mountain on what it looks like during the day. This is a, a Google map area. Okay, now let's examine this here. Okay, so here's the major rock right here. All right, now let's zoom this in. Let's get a let's zoom this in. So it does kind of look like a path right there. But I don't think it is. I think it's part of the rock, right? Because see how the rock is all, you know, it's all white layers here. I think this is part of the rock. So I'm not going to call that a path, all right? And I don't see any paths, any walking paths through here or on the other side. This is steep. Look at look at this. This is where these lights are hanging out at, at the uh, Brown Mountain in North Carolina. Look at this. And look at the cliff here. See? This would be a very hard climbs, you know, um, area. This would be a very hard uh, mountain to climb. Okay, let's back it up just a minute. All right, now look at that. See, look at that. This is all like desolate land, and I, I don't see any trails. I don't see any trails up to this rock here. Look how steep that is. So someone out there with flashlights, you know, I would kind of rule that out, right? Because there's really no way to get up there. And I think, you know, if I was there, I'd get up there somehow. You know, I would try to get up there as much as I could. I would try to get up as close as I could. And, you know, I would start looking for the petroglyphs, right? If the Native Americans were there and they saw these lights too, um, you know, that's just one interpretation where they say uh, that, you know, the, the phantom uh, girls are looking for their warriors. Um, that's just one interpretation. But I'm sure this this goes back thousands of years. And uh, and I, I am I'm almost guaranteed that there are petroglyphs there with spirals. I don't think anyone has actually discovered that or I haven't found any uh, evidence of this yet. Um, but I would think that there would be spirals there. Um, just because of what's going on here. And uh, yeah, they're going into the emergence point. And, and look at the mountain, right? Look at, look at the mountain. And you can right away tell that this mountain was created by a fault line, right? A fault line. There's a fault line in this mountain. See that? Let me get back, get back my arrow. Here's one arrow. See that cliff there? Now these lights are hanging around right in here. All right, let's go ahead and play. See that? And it's it's interesting too because this has been going on for like like a lot of years and I think over here in this area here there's like a there's like a road right there and and the people there has actually made a path um, of concrete concrete rocks um, 
and boulders or whatever, and they've made a little lookout point down there, and they've got a sign right there. I meant to show you the sign. Um, I, I forgot about it, but there's a sign there, and it talks about the lights that are always being seen up there on that mountain. Um, but it boggles my mind on, on why there's no, you know, how come nobody else goes up there and try to figure out, you know, who's up there, right? If there's any spirals up there, uh, trying to get closer than being way the hell out here, man. I mean, because me, I'm there, dude. I see those lights. I'm trying to figure out a way to get over there. I'm not going to watch the lights from two miles away. I'm getting my ass closer to find out exactly what is there. Uh, but yet they made this path and they made this little perch out there where you can sit off the side of the cliff and you can watch these lights. It's been going on for, you know, like I think, you know, a thousand of years. This has been going on for forever, you know. But uh, today's society, uh, they advertise it. They make a walkway out there. They tell, they give you a sign to read and what to expect to see out there. But no one's going out there to explore it, right, to go find out how to get up there, you know, and if there's any spirals out there. Okay, let's get going. Hmm. Okay, here we go. So that's that cliff I just showed you, All right? And so these are these are photographs. Here we go. Look at that there. See that? The only videos I could really find on this was like some stop motion videos or something. I don't know, but this is really slow. But look at these lights here. Does it look familiar? Did we just see this on South Mountain? You see that? The exact same type of stuff. Look at that. Here's another, another view. See that there? Look at that. That's the exact same type of stuff that's going on on South Mountain in Phoenix. Look. Look at that big one right there. See that? And then it just disappeared, right? We just saw the exact same thing on South Mountain. Absolutely. Some people has even caught lights above the sky, in the sky, above that mountain. And I believe... Uh, it's gonna. Sh I believe there's a video in here where it sh actually shows it. Um, so there's a light there. See that? Let's let's blow this up. There's a light right there. These lights right there. Really hard to see. There, right there. See that? Oh, there's one over there. There it is. Right there. See that? And then it just kind of disappeared, right? Now this was shot, you know, at least, I mean, a few miles away. This is on that little lurk the little lookout perch that the people has built out there and so it's really hard to see I think those are city lights out there there we go there's some lights there okay so this one here this one actually moves I don't know why they've slowed up the video on this, but you can see on how it's moving, right? See, it left that mountain. It came out of the mountain. It came, excuse me, it came out of the emergence, emergence point. See that there? Is that incredible or what? The exact same stuff we are seeing in Phoenix is the, is the exact same stuff, not only in North Carolina, but all around the world. It's the same stuff, the exact same stuff. And, you know, the people think, you know, that these are spaceships, you know, and there's a little green guy inside the spaceships. But 
what if these lights are alive, right? Oh, here's some still shots. Look at this. Now, this is interesting. These are still shots. And this is pretty, this, look at that. See that there? And what? They're blue. Isn't that interesting? They're blue. See that? Ooh, look at that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Look at that. And they're kind of blue. Didn't we see the exact same type of blue lights on South Mountain? See that? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. Look at that. The exact same stuff that they are seeing out there. Look, look, stop. Look at this. Come on now. Does that not look like what we just saw on South Mountain? See all that stuff? And, and I just showed you the aerial view on how there's like no way somebody could get out there. There's no trails out there. But yet these lights are right there, right? Incredible. Makes me want to go out there and investigate this. Because you know I'll climb that mountain. You know I'll get up there. Those of you who know me, I'll be there. I'm there, right? I'm looking for glyphs, man. I'm looking for the story. Oh, is that one up there? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Oh, yeah, 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 yep. Now, these are on the mountain. Now, watch what they do. Watch closely. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's get this bigger here. Oop. Yeah, and see, now he's telling you, he's showing you, the, the person who filmed this uh, is showing you exactly where these lights are. And um, let me let me back out of this for a minute. So he's telling you that right in here, this area is where these lights are appearing, like right over here, right there, right there. And this is where he's circling on where these lights are. Very good, very good. Okay, let's go. Now look, let's watch what they do. See how they're, they're like sparkling? Didn't we just see that on South Mountain? Watch them, watch them closely. See that there? Look, the exact same type of stuff, right? Didn't we just see that on South Mountain? Except that was a lot closer. Look, 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 look what they're doing. See that? I'm trying to get this as, as okay, I don't think I can get that as, this any bigger. Okay. Oh, yeah, so those right there, these are another photographs. Those are still photographs. Let me back this up for a minute. Let me show you again. Let's bring this down to scale here. And you can see those lights right there. Look, 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 look. See that? Look at that. Didn't we just see the same stuff on South Mountain? Uh-oh, see that there? This is the this is shot in night vision. Oh, uh, now look at that one there. See that? All right, now now the video is repeating itself. So those lights that we just saw were right over here in this area over here. On the other side, though, I believe. No, actually, no, it's over here. My bad. So it was over there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's look at the South Mountain lights. and the brown mountain lights together. Let's make a comparison, ready? Here we go. Up top is South Mountain. 
And on the bottom, there's South Mountain. And then that's the Brown Mountain lights. Let's, let's, let's watch this for a little while. See that? Look at that. Can you see the resemblance here? Especially, you know, like those blue ones I filmed, you know, from my apartment window. But yeah, this right here is, is looks exactly like the same stuff that we're seeing in Phoenix. And I think more people need to start paying attention to South Mountain. If you live in, live in Phoenix, Start paying attention to that mountain, man. It's a holy mountain. It has been for thousands of years. There are strange things going on at that mountain, right? And, and, and even more, there's more evidence on the mountain when you go up there and explore. Look, look, look. See that? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Was that just crazy or what? So if you go up on South Mountain, look for the tombs, look for the altars out there, and look for the petroglyphs. Look for the lights, man. And let's start looking at this maybe in a different perspective, if you will. Instead of spaceships and green men from Mars, what if these are living beings, living creatures? Oh, oh, and here's another secret. What if they're not from outer space, but from inner space? What if this is their planet also? What if they have always been here? What if this world is theirs also? I think, and studying it and watching it and all the history involved with this, this is more their planet than it is ours. Crazy, crazy stuff. And the, the information has been with us all these years. It's just, it's just been covered up put in libraries, not told about by city archaeologists, covered up with dirt, uh, blown up by you know people blowing up rock art, stuff like that. They're trying to hide this information from you. But when you go out there and actually look at the evidence, when you go out there and investigate this stuff for, for yourself, don't just take my word for it. This whole investigation, this whole petroglyphs in the sky routine for 20 years, is not about me, but it's about what's out there and for you to go out there and check it out for yourself. The book, I don't get money for that book. I told the, the publishers to give my half of the book and half, half of my money to, uh, to the foster kids in Phoenix. So I'm not making any money off this. I don't sell my videos. I don't sell my appearances on televisions, uh, on television shows, on guest speaking uh, from around, you know, night, from around Arizona. I don't charge any of this. It's not about money. It's not fortune and fame, Dr. Jones. It's about getting this proven evidence to the public that has been buried for 80 years. That's what this petroglyphs in the sky ship, <laughs> organization, journey, if you will, that I created in 2005 is all about. It's not about me. It's about the proven evidence. It's about the hardcore facts. It's about what we can prove. Not hearsay, but evidence. And evidence is not only what we see and read in some of these biblical scrolls written thousands of years ago, whether it's the biblical scrolls, whether it's the Anunnaki uh, tablets, uh, whether it's um, you know other countries, uh, in their ter in their interpretations of what these sky beings are, to the rock art, right? To the rock art carved on the mountains, because we can read all that stuff, we can read these these uh, scriptures, and we can look at these clay tablets, right, and understand what they're talking about, and then we can go on the mountains and see the prehistoric carvings of what these biblical and ancient texts are telling us about the Anunnaki. Right? Some of the stuff that we read in some of these biblical scriptures, I'm not talking about religion. 
I'm not even talking about religion. I'm talking about what's written and what we can prove. Because a biblical archaeologist, man, they've, they've gone beyond the call of discovering all the stuff in that book uh, that, you know, that really puts a, um, um, uh, you know, factual stuff in there. When, when you look at that book and you read it as, as a type of history book of the world, it tells you what these things are. It tells you how these things came to earth. It's been here with us this whole time. It's just been covered up, buried, not talked about, made fun of. But yet, here it is. And it's always been here. And the evidence has always been here. You have to go look for it. It's not going to fall on your lap. You have to go look for it. Don't just believe what you hear. Go out there and investigate it for yourself. Investigate what I've discovered here. That's what I want you to do. Watch the mountains more. Watch the petroglyphs more. Understand the history. Do it for yourself. Go out there and experience this. If I can do this, so can you. And that's exactly what this is all about. I want you to go out there. I want people to come back to this mountain and watch it and see all the miracles that's going on there. Because these things that are here actually... It verifies everything that we've been reading in some of these scriptures. And all this stuff is true, man. It's not just some somebody making up this story or whatever. And the carvings aren't just graffiti. They're telling a story. And the stories are meant for us. I believe it's our generation for us to understand the petroglyphs, for us to understand what's really truly here. Not from hearsay, not from somebody making a guess at it, but from what history tells us. History says that these things have always been with us. The first people who lived on our land talked about these beings. What better way of understanding what these things are than from the first people who lived here and saw them first and recorded them on the rocks? And what do they say? Spaceships from another planet? No. Spirits from the earth and sky, right? That'll conclude on today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Welcome to 2022. Let's hope this year is a lot better than the rest. I think I'm going to leave you with this. Make sure you hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Contact me on Facebook. Uh, if you have any UFO videos you want to sh show to me, I I'd love to go over it and take a look at it. And if I like it, I'll air it on the show. Uh, send me your petroglyph photographs. I'd love to analyze them and, and give you the true interpretations of what these glyphs are. And uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, um, and thank you guys so much. We will call it a night. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>